We are covering all bases, presented by Cheapo Air, with Lenny Dykstra's memoir, House of Nails. The book is available as, as today and yesterday. Chris put on his Mark Malusa's costume. You look excellent, Chris. Yeah. And we sat down with the man himself. That's right. Here's part one of our interview with Nails. We are joined now by Moose, you know who this is, number four. For legend. Defense, legendary center fielder, the man who brought the series home in 86, Lenny Dykstra. Pleasure to meet you. Awesome. Can't wait to be here. Thanks for being here. Couldn't wait to be here. And now I'm here, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm excited, um, uh, especially doing it for the, for the Mets uh, you know, network here. So. Um, plus I get two of you, not one. Exactly. <laughs> when I stop talking, he's going to jump in yeah. and you got to be on top of it. But your book, House of Nails, it's out. It's already making headlines everywhere. Uh, it's a fantastic cover photo. That dip, that was part of your look, right, as a player. That was part of your sort of personality when you were out of the field. Yeah, well, it was actually part of my act, more like, uh, meaning, um, you know, I learned early on when I was playing baseball that um, the business was putting people in seats, you know, so I was like an entertainer. Anyway, so yeah, the chew and all that stuff is, uh, again, entertainment, you know? Well, it's interesting you say that, Lenny, because I don't know, remember a player that really connected with the fan base better than you. I mean, in New York, in Philadelphia, I mean, fans adored you. They loved watching you play baseball. You know, in, in New York and, and in Philadelphia, they appreciate people playing the game right. Like, right. if you get a guy over, uh, there's no outs, and the guy on second, you're not going to hit the ball the right side. The fans actually, even though he makes it out, the fans cheer. Right. Because you're playing the game right, you know? And so I like that. And it kind of, as a, as a team, it gets you like that extra adrenaline. Like in 86 with, with the Mets, Nobody wanted to come and Shea. They didn't want to play. No. They wanted no part of that place. Let's let's go back to '86 for a second because this town still talks about the '86 Mets. Just had the 30th anniversary, of yeah. course. It's a very special team to be a part of. And I remember seeing you in '86, and I wondered, you know, what are they platooning this guy for? Why isn't he playing every day? And I was happy to read in the book that you had the very same thought. Well, yeah. I mean, what happens is, as a player. You know, you can't get paid um, um, the right amount, a certain amount of money, unless you're an everyday player. They label you, and you know, I, I knew I was ready to play every day. And, and you know, meeting the manager, we didn't really get along too well, um, um, so he never really gave me a chance. So I just pushed him real hard, you know, uh, in '89, and and so I got traded. We were playing the Phillies. I got traded when we were in Philly. I kept us one for one in that game. And Davey said, that's it, you've had enough. I said, like, you know, what? You right. Know? So I run up the runway and I'm all pissed off. And so I'm, I'm watching the TV and, and, you know, one of the greatest announcers ever, Harry Callis, says, uh, a lot of action today at the vet. And I think his initials LD. And I said, <laughs> I just got traded, man. So then you go and, you know, the game ends, you go in your cubby hole and you're waiting for the tap, you know. So I got the tap. and. I said, Dave, you want to see in his office? So I went in and it was like this. It was so, Dave says, um, my name was just traded you to the Philadelphia Phillies. We want to thank you for, you know, helping us win a World Series. And like, that was it. Well, since that's it, so now what do I do? Do I like, go over to their <laughs> I mean, I just beat the <laughs> out of that guy. <laughs> what do I do? Do I meet him halfway, meet him at home plate? And, um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was odd. That was, uh, but it's kind of been the story of my life, odd. And well, how much, Lenny? How much did that motivate you? I mean, you often don't see, you know, New York and, and Philly pulling off trades, but the fact that the Mets traded you to the Phillies, how much did that motivate you? Well, one so much motivated me. It was the Mets. They were. I mean, what happened to the Mets? And I, and I talk about it in the book. You could point to it, and and if you if you really zero in on it, in 1988. There's a point where um, the manager, you know, again, this is this is not personal; it's business. Um, you see, the manager is like the president. The, the CEOs are the owners, the will pond. So they hire him to make decisions when it matters. And so, you know, when in Dodgers, we, we we were up two games to one, and we got a you know good and pitched eight innings. He wasn't masterful, but he was strong. And he had a two-run lead going to the ninth. We're going to go up three games in one, and that's over. That happens. So 
he lets Gooden go out there, and I remember reading Joe Amalfo Tunnel, the pitching coach, saw Gooden because he's frustrated. So Sosha knows he's getting the first pitch, like, you know, fastball. And, but see, we have Randy Myers down there. Remember, I don't know if you remember, in 88, the last month, this guy was unhittable. Lights out left. Yeah. He, was a, he had a one. I mean, the party's over. I mean, he's standing by the door, but the door never opened. But if you look at that game right there, you'll see the whole organization went into an 11 or 12 year, like this downward spiral. And, you know, then you had the whole Greg Jeffries, like weirdness or, I mean, that deal was odd. Yes. I mean, no, the players couldn't stand him and he couldn't play. That, that was the part that- Well, they sold him as like basically the next yeah. great hitter and yeah, he wasn't that. But he didn't have power and he couldn't run and he was allergic to leather. I mean. Right. <laughs> I mean, without, That's putting it kindly. I mean, me. kindly. So, <laughs> and plus, he was a peculiar dude, you know. I mean, like he polishes his bats. He's, he's a. Anyways, but but, it's too bad because like that Hollywood ending, you know. Because I live in I live out there in kind of La La Land, and, and it's, it's it's kind of odd. It's kind of different to people, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that Hollywood ending wouldn't have had. We wouldn't have had that Hollywood ending if Davey did his job.